Hey, 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 happy Sunday, everybody. It is mid morning, heading in towards afternoon. Sitting out here in the workshop, and I just finished an Aruku exposed flesh walking dead type bait. Really cool. It's online. Um, you can find it on my Facebook page right now. I'm going to shoot it to Instagram and all the other applicable places here shortly. But my buddy Don up in Whitney Point, New York, who is an esteemed jig maker, um, says, hey, can you do it in blue? So I decided to kind of document the process with a camera, and we're going to see how that goes this morning. And what I'm looking, I'm just sitting here looking at these Arukus. They're, they're Dinger Custom Baits. You can go to Dinger Custom Baits online and find these beautiful, beautiful, very close replicas of the Spro Aruku. As a matter of fact, um, just happened to have, no, this was not planned, but I happen to have a real Spro Aruku, and it is very difficult to tell the difference. Um, that particular model that I just showed you is the, the junior version. It's a smaller version. The reason, number one, that I'm working with Aruku is because when I'm starting to learn uh, a new technique or pattern, it's much easier for me to put the bait and the overlays on a flat-sided bait. If you can look at this, you can see that it's going to be a whole lot easier to throw something like this down and stencil on a bait that's flat and not round like these guys over here um, I do stencil these but this is a new pattern for me um, I did my first run on that red bait this morning never tried the pattern before um, honest engine so we're gonna do this blue and I'm trying to figure out um, the manner in which I'm going to do the layering uh, I did not start with white on the red one, and we'll show you, we'll go ahead and show you the red right here. Um, I don't know how well the camera's picking that up, but the red is drying. Let's see if we can get a little closer on that. It's going to be super cool. Um, but explo uh, exposed flesh and muscle is, is like a reddish white, and he wants a blue basic bait over top of that. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do just to get the red and and I hate I will say this with a passion I hate drawing on baits but if I'm gonna do overlays in different colors and I'm gonna have a red base I think I'm gonna start by just kind of pinning loosely where my pattern is going to be located so I can come back for reference and work in that so Y'all can see I have some little lines, little dots on this bait. And now when I spray red, because that's going to be the, the underlying muscle structure for this bait, you, I'll be able to know that I'm going to spray it just in that little area. Um, and it's going to be translucent. So now that I have that basic one, I can come back because these things have points at which they were pieced together. The, the baits themselves, most baits are pressed from two pieces together. Um, you can see on this one, there are various points at which you can work. So I know that generally speaking, it's going to be pretty much through here where the red is going to go. And we're going to flip it to the other side because we're going to need to do that red. Just a, just a mist of red, roughly on both sides of the bait. And you guys might think that I'm a little bit nuts now for doing this, but I think there will be a method to my madness, and you'll see it once we really start to put this bait together. So real quick, and I don't think that I showed this the last time when I was doing an, an airbrush pattern with the actual airbrush and not just how to make it without one, um, but there should be a pressure gauge on your compressor this little guy right here so I don't know how well the camera is going to be able to pick this up because it's so close but that's 20 and you just want to kind of move that down to where you have a little bit less pressure and you can actually hear the difference so right now I'm working right around 15 I might even bring that down just a little more closer to 10 
okay uh, we don't need a whole lot of pressure for our red actually we really don't need a whole lot of pressure for anything but the bases of uh, the blues on here so we're working with about 15 on our pressure gauge and we're just gonna drop some transparent red into that uh, let's clean off the gook one thing that you don't want to deal with in your chamber is a bunch of junk that's going to gum it up and it's going to waste your time and there's not a whole lot of red that's going into this um, that might even still be a little too much so somewhere between 10 and 15 and then you don't want to push right up on it because the pressure is still going to be too great so you just want to kind of press down and then pull that trigger back and you can start to see and then just kind of basically throw that into the little outline dots that we made and if you get a little bit of excess on there eh, it's okay um, got to remember there's going to be layers on this and it's going to take up any of the minor imperfections down the road we're going to do the same with this and we're going to flip it over and do the same thing um, one thing i want to stress to you guys is to heat set these things in between all your layers there's nothing more important because the last thing you want is to have wet paint and hit your trigger and just have it blow all over the place. So a lot of the times you'll, you'll see when I'm blending colors, I'll use wet on wet because it gets a tighter blend and you don't see that granular effect from your airbrush. But for this particular bait, since we're not really blending here we're doing layers we're going to go ahead and heat set every single time so now you can see that our red area is coming together and the reason we want this red in here at all is to kind of accentuate the muscle structure of how this bait is going to look and this would be the point in the video where i'm showing you the picture of the previous bait that I did. Now I'm finished with the uh, the red for right now so I've got some color cleaner in the chamber and make sure you remember to turn your pressure back up to about 20 between 20 and 30 when you're blowing your cleaner. I'm using this stuff I like to add a little bit. I've got this big container, but I like to put it in this because I can kind of concentrate right down into that chamber. And then put my finger on the tip of this, kind of push back, and that gets all that excess paint, all that potential gunk back out into the chamber where I can just kind of wipe that free. Just a pretty decent way to thoroughly clean between colors. And like I said, I'm not going to be using any any kind of wet blending here so we're going to clean our chamber every single time there's only four colors on this so it's fairly simple in the color scheme and basic shadowing is going to be white and black so now we're going to go heat set this real quick and then come back and hit the blue you guys know anything about my work um, you know that i like pretty contrasty bright colored baits uh, this is not going to be an exception to that. So we're going to go with an opaque. This is an opaque sky blue from Createx. And then we're going to fade into a deeper blue around the face and around the tail. Now don't forget to turn that pressure back down to somewhere between 10 and 15. You don't need a whole lot of pressure for this. And I always like to, when I've cleaned my chamber out, I always want to make sure that I've got a solid flow of paint going through this and that there's no excess clear or um, cleaner that's in there because what that'll do is that's really going to mess up your bait. You're going to have to dry it and it's just it's kind of wasted time. 
So now what we're going to be doing here is just kind of outlining the face here. Straighten this out. We're going to kind of go all the way. Open that chamber up. Come through the back there. Do the same thing. Get the underbelly. Belly of the bait is important. Don't want to forget to do that right up to the cheek just kind of give it a once over doesn't have to be super dark but you want to try and stay away from that red as much as possible it's okay if you kind of intrude a little bit and you can see that the <laughs> even though I have low pressure on this it's still enough to move that paper around so that's why understanding and controlling your Pressure is real important on this. Check how much I've got left, and I'm going to need a little bit more to do the second bait. Just double check the other bait, make sure that everything looks copacetic, that the bait is entirely covered. Yeah, belly. Now this isn't opaque on the outside, this blue, the sky blue is opaque, not transparent. Um, but you still have the, trans the, the transparent red in the middle is important because that's where, if it were a real wounded fish and it had a chunk out of it and a fish were looking up at it, it would be more inclined to believe that this was an actual bait fish um, because you can kind of see a little bit through it. Um, so that's, that's the intent anyways. We're going to come back and hit this with a little bit of uh, fade on the blue. And uh, then we're going to start our stenciling. Now with this blue fade, it is wet on wet. I have not heat set this. We're going to heat set this after we're finished fading this in. Just going to kind of follow the curves. Hit the tail of the bait. We're not going to do a whole lot. We are going to do the cheeks and the belly in this dark blue. I'm not going to show you both baits. You probably can get the idea pretty well from just watching this one. We are going to cover the entire eye. That's important. Heat set. Okay, now in this chamber, I have some transparent white. Transparency is important not just in everyday politics and life, but making this particular pattern as well. I'm adding just a couple drops of hot pink because we want that flesh tone. We don't want it to be 100% white. I think that's a little too contrasty, but we do want the white to be apparent. We really don't need a whole lot, so I don't need to mix this in a cup. A little toothpick. Maybe just a little more white. That pink goes a long way, folks, so. Just mixing that up. And we're going to... That's probably good. Fairly light. The idea is to get the muscle structure in. So now we have our two baits here. I'm just going to put that on like so. And I can see the red in my bait underneath. We don't want this to move. Where oh where do I get these stencils from? Well, um, a couple of places you can get them. Airbrush Megastore is outstanding. It's a huge resource for airbrushers. Um, a lot of free tutorials, a lot of paint selections, these are there. But you can find the art tools, which I believe is made uh, here in the States in Oregon, on the West Coast somewhere perhaps, um, sold through Megastore, which is out of Australia, but also sold on Amazon. And the least expensive prices I've been able to find are on Amazon.com. 
so I don't know if the camera can pick this up pretty well but I can see my my general red area and I wanna yeah that's why it's important that we get all of that out and my pressure is too high so a good thing that I didn't spray the bait directly that would have been disastrous I got my pressure down to about 10 we just want to make sure that the it's coming out it's a very light pink and it should do pretty well for the muscle structure just want to concentrate on the middle parts of this And there we have it. And that's it. All right, folks, we have got both sides of these baits done with the vein portion or the muscles, depending on what you want to call them. But the, uh, the guts of it is done. Now, this is the step that's going to tie it all together. I'll take this back off of here. We're going to lay down one at a time, and we're going to use this stencil. As you can see, okay, now we're going to lay it on here, we'll make sure we have plenty of room to get the entire thing down. We're going to lay it on here just about like this, okay. And we can go ahead and just kind of keep that like that. Now we're going to put our black paint in. This is the last step before we get to the clear coat and the eyes. Actually, this is the last painting step. Got some opaque black, just a regular black, not a midnight. And just to, again, you don't need a whole lot because we're really only doing shadowing. And here's what makes this bait pop. So we've got one little piece taped down. I'm going to go ahead and tape the other side down just to keep it steady so I don't knock it by accident because it is hanging over just a little bit. I'll put my hands down on this. Now this is going to change if I'm not using a, a flat sided bait, but for the purposes of this video, this is the easiest way to show you guys how to do this. So we want to make sure that we have as flat of a surface and as much contact as possible. We want to make sure that we don't have any clear, and I keep saying clear, we don't have any cleaner left in that bait. So the important part on this is to hit the outline on your stencil. I'm even holding my breath while I do that because I want my hand to be as steady as possible. We have one side. Now we're going to go back and do another side. Up on the other side. You can go a little heavier in, in one corner, but make sure it's the same consistent corner. Like you don't want to be heavy over here and then be heavy over here because the whole thing is all about shadowing. So you really want to be consistent with technique here. All right. 
and again we've taped it down we have flipped the stencil over to mimic what's on the other side in as best a manner we can and once again this is what your bait's going to look like we're going to set this back up in the cradle because we have one more bait to do so you don't want to slide it across your workspace now see this is also cool because you have the outline of where your previous bait was so you can just come back and do the same thing with this one right here right nice and simple and remember you want to be spraying the stencil more than you want to spray what's underneath of it because you want that shadowing shadowing is the key to baits like this when you're using stencils any kind of a stencil whether you're hand cutting it yourself and then we're just going to go ahead and put a little bit of accent a little bit of darkening in one corner just to mimic some natural shading and folks that's pretty much it we're gonna put this back in the cradle but that's pretty much it for spraying this is what we got and a whole lot of love from Led Zeppelin it's gonna look so damn sick when it's completely clear coated Woo! Lord, yeah. Y'all stick around for that. Guys, and we're going to use some super glue. This is Loctite gel. Um, I'm just about out of this. I've been squeezing for like weeks now. You'd think this would be at the end of its line, but it's not. So, nothing wrong with a little Sunday morning Zeppelin, y'all. Good times. These are Chrome Eyes from Lure Parts Online. LurePartsOnline.com. Quarter inch 3D Chrome Eyes. Looks super killer on a walking dead bait like this. The only thing you want to pay particular attention to is to not get the glue on your fingers because it will gum up the eye. Try and get that as centered as possible. We're going to flip this over and do the other side of the bait. Okay, now we have, man, very cool. You chilling with some Zeppelin with me, bud? Yeah, it's Led Zeppelin. We love Zeppelin. It's not pickles. This is our KBS. I keep it in a glass jar. It, it keeps very well like that. Sing it, Robert. Woo! It's just the kind of day we're having here at Jekyll Bates, y'all. Now, the thing about this is... You got to hook it up. We want the bait to dry basically like this. But at first we can't do that because you notice on these Arukus, you see where this little tail eyelet is. Well, the clear coat has a tendency to want to run down the bottom of the bait because this is set up a little bit higher. So when we hang these on the drying rack, it's going to hang at an angle with a drip wire that's going to allow all that excess clear coat to just kind of run off that drip wire. So we're going to go ahead and dip this in. There we go. It's a Led Zeppelin kind of day, folks. Watch this. Once that slows down, we're going to add this over here. Let me 
just kind of put it on there loosely. And you can see that that's hanging at an angle and that's exactly what we want it to do. And we're going to take our little extra piece here. Just kind of stick this in as a drip wire. And that's going to send all that excess clear coat away from the bait so it doesn't lay on there. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a wrap.